Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back in the Wichita. A ship that we haven't played very much on this channel because personally I prefer the Baltimore. But Hi Cal and I were stream sniping uh, Hive the other day and so uh, this was one of the matches where we didn't end up against Hive. <clears throat> and so I thought you guys might want to see this. It's a fun match. A lot of close quarters Wichita play, which is something you don't see very often, because most people just try to stay as far away from everything as possible, even though you've got a radar cruiser, but, you know, to each their own. <clears throat> so, right off the bat, we're going to start by playing as, uh, as typical as you can. Now, my voice is feeling a little bit funny right now, so I apologize if my voice sounds a little weird to you guys, but uh, I'm trying to uh, get it together for a video, but uh, anyway... We're going to be pushing up behind the island initially. High Cal's in the destroyer. He's going to go out. He's going to spot. And we're going to see what we can get into. Uh, now, you, you're going to see pretty early in this match that the enemy team just kind of abandons this flank for the most part. And that's going to allow us to really move forward on this side of the map. Uh, remember that the Wichita and the Baltimore both have the same armor. And it's 32 millimeters of bow and stern armor. So, or not 32, sorry. 27 millimeters of bow armor and stern armor, which means that you cannot be overmatched by 15 inch guns and less. Okay, so the only things you really have to worry about if you're bow on, which you should be most of the time, is 16 inch guns and larger, like the Massachusetts out there has. <clears throat> so early we've got some shots. We're going to take a shot at the Massachusetts right before he disappears. Uh, one of the things that the, the Wichita does really well is HE. Everybody knows. But uh, a lot of people sleep on the AP on this ship as well. And we're going to showcase some of it later in the game. Now you can see, the guy disappears. We've got uh, a shot out. We don't want to actually hit him. And uh, we're going to start making our way forward as High Cal is going to come under fire pretty quickly here from a radar cruiser. And uh, I think there's a destroyer is spotted. Yeah, he's got the destroyer spotted right now. Uh, Massachusetts is backing off. That's my biggest threat. If I, if I don't have to worry about the Massachusetts, I literally have nothing to worry about. So uh, we're going to start moving forward now Now that we see that we have the advantage. Now, Kagero got spotted there uh, just as uh, High Cal had to go into his smoke. And so we take another shot over the island at the Massachusetts, just hoping for something. And we do have a fire burning right now, I believe, on the Massachusetts. So uh, we're going to try to come around the corner and help with this destroyer. We know we're a radar cruiser. So if we can close in, we can really, really punish these guys. You can see we're taking some more shots at this Massachusetts. Massachusetts, I thought, was running away. He has now kind of doubled back, and he's kind of sitting in that channel, which is not what I want to see because I'm overmatched by his guns, and that's not what you want when you want to push forward. So you don't want to leave yourself open to just being smashed, okay? That's definitely not what you want. Uh, now, we're, we're struggling to get our shots over the island. Remember, this is a heavy cruiser, not a light cruiser, so it doesn't get the really floaty shells, which is both a blessing and a curse. Uh, but we're going to get out here, and we're going to try to get some shots on this Massachusetts. This Massachusetts is being a little bit too brave for his own liking. But he is being just enough behind everything that I can't really get a clear line of sight on him. But we're able to fire at him, get a couple hits, and not worry about getting shot back for the most part. Now, we see the the Alaska dead ahead. We know that there's a Vanguard out there. So if we can get rid of this Ala or this Massachusetts, we'll have a much better time. We get another fire set on this Massachusetts. That should burn for a little bit. Uh, I lied. It, he immediately uh, damage controlled it. So uh, we get another good shot into him, another 1,800 damage. And we lose a ship already. So we're going to push forward. We've got the Alaska out here broadside on. We got the HE loaded initially, and I really, really wanted to go with the AP because he's just begging for it. But the HE was doing enough that I didn't really need to switch at this moment. Plus, there's the destroyer nearby, and we don't want to not have HE loaded when the destroyer comes around the corner. Uh, for the most part, we're doing okay. We're, we're getting secondaries hitting us from the Massachusetts. Uh, we get another shot over the island. This time we did load the AP, and we get a nice 1,800 damage out of him. Uh, Massachusetts sailing behind the island again, and we had AP loaded. This is what I was talking about. We didn't want to have that loaded, 
880 damage with a 440 pin, probably from the secondaries. We're switching back to the HE to make sure we can punch him. Unfortunately, he is just going to be able to get away from it for the moment. Get right behind that island. Not able to get away with it, but uh, we have our sonar running. That's going to keep him lit up, and he's just going to go down pretty quickly. He's not going to. He's not going to survive. But we also have this Alaska out here that's hiding behind the island. And so once the Kagero does go down and uh, Haikal managed to finish him off, uh, we're going to just try to push our luck over here. And that's when the Vanguard kind of makes himself known. So uh, we're going to have to slow down, hold up, and try to get get some damage on this uh, Vanguard before we push around on the Alaska. We don't want to be trying to, because we need to bow tank both of them. Uh, so we don't want to be bow tanking the Alaska and get hit by the 15-inch guns of the Vanguard and vice versa. So... Uh, We've got a broadside vanguard. We're going to take advantage of it. Now, at this angle and from this distance, AP is not a very good strategy against him, just solely because the uh, Wichita has, like, not great AP. It's decent, but it's not amazing like the Baltimore, Baltimore's is. Uh, we get a fire on him right there. We're going to try to fire up towards the front of his ship, maybe hit the middle, see if we can get a fire elsewhere. If we get two fires burning, we'll feel a lot better about it. Uh, he did damage con already, so now we, we can try to get another fire that's going to burn for quite a while. And uh, sure enough, I'm fairly confident we get a fire right as we get him out of sight here. He's getting behind the island. Now he has completely abandoned his Alaska. His Alaska has been beat up, and surely the 6-3 uh, takes him down. Now, we are down two caps to one. They are closing in on us in points, even though we have the kill lead. So we need to start doing something about that. Haikal says he's going to go towards B. I'm going to go over here and grab uh, D. That way we can guarantee that we're going to have at least a cap advantage on these guys. And that'll help make sure that they don't keep gaining points on us. They're going to have to kill us if they want to beat us. And so that's, that's the goal. And right off the bat, I look over to my right. We've got some juicy targets over there. We've got an Odin just sitting there waiting for us. Uh, nice, beautiful broadside. Again, at this angle, not a very good chance for the AP. So we're going to just stick to the HE, let it do its thing. And sure enough, one fire immediately. Like That is what the Wichita is known for. Wichita is known for just being able to set fire after fire after fire. And then when it's not setting fires, it's still doing quite a bit of damage because it's still 8-inch high explosive. Like, it's nasty. Uh, so we've got a fire on the rear of the ship, or the rear part of the superstructure, and we're going to try to hit towards the front. And it's just not seeming to work for us. We're just trying to get that second fire, and we just can't seem to get it. But uh, oh, there we go. I lied. We do get the second fire, and he immediately damaged cons. Go figure. <laughs> so uh, we're going to see if we can't get another fire on him. But he is broadside to a whole lot of folks out there, and so hopefully they can finish him off pretty quick. And he, his damage control cooldown should be starting, which means, yep, he's on fire again. Somebody else got the fire this time. And we'll see if we can't set a fire on the front. But he is just getting ripped apart. There's no way he can survive much longer. And uh, we get another fire on him. That's going to be the end of him. Fletcher ends up getting him with Haikal at his fire. Uh, Vanguard out there, though, absolutely running for the hills. He, he wants nothing to do with this. He just watched what happened to the Odin. Doesn't like his odds, so he's just running away. And so we're going to we're gonna push up around this corner, see if we can't get in, involved on both of these battleships. Uh, or this battleship and this cruiser. Charles Martel out here thinking he's got a good chance, but I don't think so. I, I think I like my odds, especially considering I'm mostly going to be shooting HE out of this thing. And uh, if you do give me a broadside, I'll, I'll punch you with the AP. But uh, Bismarck makes himself known. We're going to go ahead and try to uh, set some fires on him. Uh, not a very good shot with the first salvo. We're going to try to do better with the second one. Aim a little bit further back. And that one looks center of mass into the superstructure. And, of course, as soon as we get the shot on him, I believe it was Haikal getting the fire. And uh, this guy's running the perk that limits the amount of fires to, th to three instead of four. So he got a single fire that ended up looking like two fires. But he immediately gets obliterated. Everything about that was just wrong. <laughs> We're at 65,000 damage, and you're probably thinking, well, Spartan, uh, I don't know why you would show us this. This isn't that good of a game. But it is. It really is. It's a good team game showcasing, uh, you know, high cow going back around the long way, coming into B and affecting them. Me maintaining our advantage on this side, getting this cap gives us the cap advantage, and then these guys are nowhere near the cap. Our guys are going to be able to roll through B, get that cap, and then we can work on these uh, stragglers out here. 
And we're going to flush him out. Nope, never mind. I lied. We're not going to flush him out because they're already dead. As I said, we're going to flush him out from behind their islands. But Vanguard, if you look at his icon on the map, has doubled back and is headed in our direction. And so that's why I'm still continuing on my course. I want to make sure that if this Vanguard goes behind this island, that he doesn't survive. Uh, and I don't mind taking on a Vanguard at this, this range, um, especially if he gives me a broadside, uh, which this guy is going to do. Like, he can't overmatch my bow armor, so I can literally just go straight at him. And he, he can't really do a whole lot to me unless he switches to HE. Now, Vanguard has British HE, and it's fantastic. Um, it's also got very good AP. And this guy just, for whatever reason, refused to switch to HE to shoot me. And worse than that, he's going to stay mostly broadside. He turned away initially, but then you're going to watch him. He's going to show some disrespect here in a moment. He doesn't respect the Wichita's AP ability. And that is pretty common, to be real. And that's one of the, the perks of being in the Wichita over the Baltimore. The Baltimore, everybody knows how nasty the AP is on the Baltimore. And so nobody is willing to give the broadside to a Baltimore unless they're absolutely ridiculous. Now, we get a fire here on the Vanguard, which is going to be nice. Uh, we are trying to set another fire, trying to aim a little bit further forward, maybe get one over across the bow. Uh, we're still hitting a little bit too far to the center. And now that he's giving me a flat broadside, we're going to go to that AP, and we're going to show just how nasty this AP can be at close range. And first shot, 4,200 damage. Oh, and it, it gets much better than that. The closer we get, the better our AP is going to be. Now, he started angling in, so we shoot to the superstructure. Another 4,400. And then he makes the mistake of going full broadside at, what, 4 kilometers? Yeah, this is never going to go well for you. Another 6,500 damage. And I believe this next shot is actually going to be a citadel, but we'll see. Good shot into the bow armor. Okay, that wasn't the citadel, but 5,000 damage. Uh, just making sure we're not hitting the thickest part of his armor, getting good damage off of him. This one is the citadel. Aim a little above the waterline, and we get that 7,700, and he's about to go down. Our fire's still ticking away on him, but unfortunately, Massachusetts manages to yoink our kill, uh, which, I mean, at the end of the day, he's dead. That's all that matters, right? But there's still one guy out here left. Uh, we've got an advantage. Uh, we're 900 to 200, but Mogami is still out there. I want to try to get a shot on him. He's in range. Are we going to be able to take a shot? Come on, Spartan. Going to have to lead him really well here. Don't screw the pooch. We want him dead. It's going to be real close. It's going to be real close. He started turning away from us because, you know, I'm the only one that exists, so everybody's got to, like, run from me. They just saw what I did to the Vanguard. Meanwhile, Heikau's sitting there capturing the base, firing his guns at him, and uh, just getting away with it. But uh, it looks like he finally shot at Heikau there, and Heikau gets the cap, and somebody manages to kill the Mogami right as the cap. So, uh... We win. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. This was a fun match. It was a good showcase of teamwork as well as just using the Wichita more than just a sit in the back and, and wait. You can be very aggressive in the Wichita, just like you can with the Baltimore. And you still want to switch when it's applicable to the AP. So if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next video.